listening to Double Time, your daily accessible technology show. Now, here's your hosts, Stephen Scott and Sean Priest. Oh, hello, 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 Sean Priest. How are you today, this fine Wednesday? <laughs> Please tell me you're better than yesterday. Uh, well, I couldn't be worse. Um, yes, no, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic for Wednesday, <laughs> Stephen Scott. How are you? Is that because uh, Tuesday was so bad? Because, look, I, I, I was unaware of how yeah. things were going during the, the course of yesterday's programme. In fact, it's fair to say things went from bad to worse during the episode. I'm not going to say... I, I, I don't want to say yeah. this, but I'm going to have mm. to say it because there's no other way to say it. But yes. I remember the day I got the call from you saying, yes. uh, Stephen, a slight problem with it. today's show. Um, yes. I can't come because I'm currently lying on the road with a broken yes. leg. Correct. That's right. And yes. that, that then followed, I think, six months of misery. For me. I'm so sorry. What can I say? I'm so selfish yes. an individual. So that's, that's a good that's a good uh, call in sick, though, isn't it? It's not bad. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually lying on a pavement and here's the ambulance coming. I mean, look, if you, look, I know you wanted some time off. You could just have asked. I mean, really, there was no need for all that. But then, of God, course, not God only that, watch. Yeah, yes. yeah, this saved your life. Quite literally. I hope you emailed Tim Cook about that because he likes those I did. emails. Yes, mm. thank you very much. I'm going to be one of those inspirational stories. That's right, yeah. I, I just want the reply from Tim saying, thanks, T. Yeah. You know, that's all, that's all I want. I just want to keep that for a It's like with someone, so there's, there's a, a famous newsreader here in the UK called Emily Maitlis who is well known for, actually known worldwide for one interview that she did, and that was with Prince Andrew. Uh, that famous interview that, that kind of rocked the world, and, and it, you know, there's been movies made about it, dramas made about that particular um, interaction, shall we say. And it yes. was uh, you know really interesting. And the other day I mentioned that I think my Lady A, my British voice Lady A, sounds like her. Okay. So yes. I mentioned this on, on X, and she huh? liked my post. No, I was all giggly. Way. Oh, that basically that makes you a celebrity by proxy. By proxy, virtually. yeah, yes. That's like me and my mate Chris. You know, oh. we're like that. Da 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 do 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 da, do, da, do. Da, da, da. Hey. He's doing amazing, by the way, Chris. You are a star. Well done. He is doing really well. Although, you know, it's one of those things though. I, I don't want all these other. People, these sighted folk, to start saying, "Oh well, if Chris can be a, a, a you know a wonderful dance person, yeah, dancer, that, I think the, oh, the right, words you're grasping for, um, <laughs> then you know dance you first. could you could be too. Uh, this is what happens. Yeah. You see, it's like you know, well, one blind person does something, then we're all expected to do it. This is the McCausland. He's he's a one off. He's Mr. Hips, apparently. Although in saying so, that, yeah. you know, for people who don't know, Chris is a comedian and no one's ever suggested I could do that. So I suppose, you know, it's not for everything, right? Very true. Mm. Anyway, it feels like we've gone off on a tangent here. What, Let's a double talk tap? about me. Okay, fine. What about you? Yeah, what do you think what of... do you think about me? Let's leave that. Uh, for the next <laughs> <laughs> for the last couple of days I've just been having no you know you know, I've been cleaning the kitchen, I wipe the sides and I swipe off a cup. Breaks. Mm. Yeah. And it just seems to be constant at the minute. I just keep knocking things over, dropping things. And yesterday I fell down the shed steps again. Uh, well done, Sean. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? We just sort of packed away all the furniture and the sun loungers and the over optimistic sun umbrellas from the back garden there. <laughs> Pack them up because it's winter now. The clocks have gone back here in the UK. And um, I, I just came down the steps and they're all slimy and uh, and I just went, whoop, gone. Mm. So, yeah, I spent yesterday's show just quietly bleeding. Yeah, um, that's that's what we didn't know. From, <laughs> from the point where, where we had the interview, we played the interview with uh, Greg Hargraves yesterday. And that's when you left the shed and then you came back in. Yes. And at that point, I, I learned that you were bleeding oh uh, yes i was uh, faint yes but luckily enough we didn't have long to go so it, it was fine well neither I did you by the sound of it that was the problem <sighs> wow it's just one of, you know it just you have those times where it's just everything i touch i just seem to it's one of those frustrating blind moments god do bless you, us do you think that's related to tiredness because i if i have a tired day it mm. just it, it it knocks me off entirely it's like it's, it's as if my balance just has gone completely 
not balance, but you know, just my ability to I judge think, anything is just gone. I don't know. I don't know if it's just mood. Maybe I'm just a bit grumpy over the last couple of days. Maybe oh, it's you're just getting old. Yeah, well, it's a loud, grumpy old man. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you come in here to I get say some... men, because there's oh, two yeah. of us. Thank you. Oh, I yeah. see. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's a bit slow on the uptake then. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um, why am I apologising? You were rude to me. Um, Sorry. Anyway, look, I'll cheer you up. I'm going to cheer you up today. You know Thank why? You. Go on. Because I have... Breaking news. Breaking news. I nearly didn't, but we it's, we now have breaking news. It's like the Apple advent calendar, isn't it? It's just every day we see what's behind the latest door. Do you know, I don't know if I'm liking this or hating it. I can't quite work it out. I feel every day at three o'clock, I'm either going to be mildly disappointed or mildly excited. Is it, before we get to today's, or at least yesterday's, is it working? Anyway, before we get to the latest and yesterday's one, Apple, yeah yesterday's how how are they doing this <laughs> i mean usually if they're not doing an event they just quietly release it to the apple store mm. you know there'll be a little page on there this is new so how how are they actually uh, announcing this new, these new products this week so what they've done is exactly that the store goes down for a couple of minutes it comes back up with new product okay. uh, on the home page but i will say though they've been pretty slow on the website because um I actually don't feel so bad about double tap on air at the moment uh, because, you know, they've been a bit slow. Like, for example, they brought out the new product. Uh, the first one this week was the iMac. And when they brought that out, uh, the pages were still referring back to the one with the M3. All the, you know, the pre-order area was all the M3. And it was like, well, hang on, this hasn't caught up yet. So even the big companies get it wrong sometimes or just don't That's quite unusual keep up. for Apple. Well, you know, in fairness, they are, they are updating how many websites? Because, of course, it's not just one, is it? There's all kinds of different websites around the world. Every one requires an update. So, you know, someone's yeah. got to go in and press publish on a number of WordPress accounts, I guess. Oh, it's hard work. It is hard work. Okay. But anyway, yeah, so they're publishing it there. They're also publishing an article to their Apple Newsroom, which is where what we're watching. And they're publishing videos to YouTube as well, which actually contain information about the product and give us a sense. So yesterday we played in uh, the clips about the iMac. Today we'll do the same about uh, this product, which is, do you know what? I think the one I was actually looking forward to and thought it would actually come on Wednesday because uh, it was a new design entirely, and that is of the Mac Mini. Oh, oh, okay. And uh, the big news is the size. Were the rumours true? Let's find out. The new Mini is just 5x5 five five inches, so it takes up much less space on your desk compared to the previous generation. You get a wide array of ports on the back, and for the first time, ports on the front for more convenient access. The new Mini jumps from M2 all the way to M4. So you get a big boost in performance in an incredibly small design. With M4 CPU, you get four performance cores and six efficiency cores. So Mini delivers up to 1.8 times faster performance than with M1. The 10-core GPU brings hardware-accelerated mesh shading and ray tracing to the Mini for the first time. So graphics-intensive apps and games are up to 2.2 times faster. And the neural engine is over three times faster on Mac Mini with M4 than with M1. With all this performance, Mac Mini with M4 is a great system for PC users switching to a Mac. In fact, compared to the top-selling PC desktop in its price range, the new Mini is 120th the size. And yet, it's up to an astonishing six times faster for workloads like video editing. And if you're upgrading from an Intel-based Mac Mini, performance is up to 13 times faster with M4 for tasks like speech-to-text processing. So you can use AI to instantly apply video effects and generate captions for a ton of posts with the upcoming version of Final Cut Pro. So that's the new small but fierce Mac Mini. With Apple intelligence, outrageous performance, and even better connectivity in a surprisingly compact form, the new Mini is the lovable little Mac that can do it all. It now comes standard with 16 gigabytes of memory, and yet it still starts at just $599, which makes it an outstanding combination of performance and features at a terrific price. You can pre-order it today, and it'll be available next week. 
So that is the brand new Mac Mini that has just been announced. And this one we can actually see is brand new because it's a new design as well. Totally new design, about a quarter of the size of uh, the original. Well, not the original, actually, because a lot of people like to talk about the original Mac Mini, but <laughs> I'm old enough to remember the original Mac Mini. Uh, mm. It was a different size entirely. And of course, yeah. then it changed in 2010 to the design that has been up until now. So the design we've had is 14 years old. So, yeah, I guess it was a time for a refresh. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's a strange one, right? And it, it doesn't make much sense in some ways because it's a device that sits on your desk. It just sits there and it is already tiny. I mean, there's... I don't think there's any other desktop out there to beat it, except one of those maybe bare bones type machines that you buy, or what are they called? The NUC computers the that you Intel buy. The Intel NUX. Yeah. Yes. Um, was it Next Unit of Computing or mm. whatever they called it? Tiny little are, desktops, yeah. Again, very, very nice. And it's all about that small form factor. Uh, to be honest, and, and to give respect to Apple, I think they're the ones that push this whole tiny, you know, um, desktop computing design. So I think they're all following the the Mac Mini. Um, I'm, I think this is fantastic. Are you not excited? I am actually excited about this uh, because, you know, I think the size is one thing. I mean, I'm not as bothered about that, but what I am excited about, because I wasn't expecting this, is Thunderbolt 5 to be in there. So, you know, Thunderbolt 4 is currently available on, you know, most of the, the existing lineup. What? Thunderbolt 5 is, you know, much faster, you know, 120 gig a second. I mean, for someone who's like me, who's working with video. Um, and, you hang know, on, hang on. That's, that's hang good. On. We discussed the iMac yesterday and that had Thunderbolt 4. Yes. Yeah, it, it didn't mention Thunderbolt 5. No, nope. Thunderbolt 5 is not in the new iMac. It's only how, in the new Mac why? Mini. And yeah. why? I don't know what's going on here, right? Because I, I don't know if they, they must see this as a different, for a different market. Because when you think of it, you know, the iMac to me, and I guess to most people, is is a bit, not quite a leisure device, but it's a family computer. Right? It's not a computer you can sit That's down and maybe so do huge amounts of work at, right? Because they don't have a pro version of the iMac. The iMac come out, uh, what, yesterday with, you know, colours being the central point, right? It was all about the colours, and it was all about the M4 chip in there. It was all about, you know, the, the design of the fact that you've got this really nice machine, you've got a great webcam, family photos, mm. um, you know, taking pictures, great Zoom calls, you know, or FaceTime calls, you know, all that kind of stuff. Of course, Apple Intelligence featured heavily as well. But with the Mac Mini, the focus is on productivity. That's the difference. And I think that... The Mac Mini is, is a workhorse, and, and it always will be. You know, it's it's there on... So interesting. You'll find it in server the... farms, but you'll also find it, you know, in video editors' homes. Um, you'll find it in photographers' homes. Really? Yeah. See, now I take it in the complete opposite way. I thought the iMac was more for those media types, those doing photo work, video editing work, you know, who, who want that big screen all in one. Um, and the, the, the Mac Mini was more for, you know, us, personal home use. Um, no, I see it's the other way around. But, yeah, but, but looking at the specs now, I totally understand. I think you're right. I mean, why would you go Thunderbolt 5? Now, I'm not saying there's, you know, most people would not care. I'm not entirely sure of the difference other than speed in those. And I'm not sure of the limitations if you, you know, go from 4 to 5, if, if you would even notice. But... At the end of the day, it just seems strange to me that there would be a, a, a difference there. I think the first thing that comes to mind is that the length of time of updating between one Mac Mini to the next is much longer than it would be for an iMac. iMacs seem to get, especially these days, get updated almost yearly. Whereas the Mac Mini, it's a couple of years. So I think it's probably that they want to pack more into this now so that they've got more features in this that are you know, more longer term able. And also, you know, who knows what's coming down the line. I mean, I must admit, it is a bit odd. There's some of the specifications um, are a bit odd. However, it is important to say this. Thunderbolt 5, it would appear, comes only with the M4 Pro chip inside the Mac Mini. So if you get the M4 version of the Mac Mini, you will get Thunderbolt 4. Oh, so, well, that explains it completely. There is no M4 Pro version for the iMac. That's the reason. Okay, that makes sense now. But 
yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's such a, I'm with you though, because I think, you know, you would look at the iMac and you would say, that's perfect for photographers. It's perfect for videographers. You know, it's perfect for anybody, frankly, who wants to just be creative. That was always what was kind of sold as the Mac thing, right? You know, PC users would buy them to, I don't know, stay at spreadsheets all day or whatever. But, you know, uh, for people who like to enjoy their lives, they Stop would uh, maybe try something like, you know, editing a photograph or, you know, You're edit like a, a video. You're a living Apple advert, aren't you? <laughs> You're unbelievable. <laughs> Boring old PC. Um, okay, but where does that leave the rest of the lineup? I mean, what's what's going on with the Mac Studio now then? Well, I imagine that's going to get an update. I wouldn't have, I will, I'm going to put my cards on the table. I don't think, and of course, you know, the announcements will be out as we are airing, I would imagine. So we, yes. we'll probably, we'll, we'll know by now. Um, but we're playing catch up here. I we guess. are playing a bit of catch to, up. Due this to week. scheduling. Yeah, just just the, the time of the announcements is just after uh, the show finishes <laughs> or just before it seems. Um, but anyway, the point is that you know the the focus I think this week is on iMac, Mac Mini, and MacBook Pro. I think Mac Studio, yes. uh, Mac Pro, and even the MacBook Air is next year, early next year. And, and there's question marks as well. I mean, how, fa- how fast are they going to roll out these processors? Because every year we've had a new silicon chip. And mm. it, it actually then what happens is every device starts playing catch up. As soon as, soon as a, a device, like the, when the M4 iPad came out, you know, was, those of people who were buying M3 MacBook Pros were like, mm, hang on, is this wise? Is something yeah, new around the course. corner? You're just playing an endless game of, of catch-up on it. So I think you have to leap in at some point. This is a good machine, though. I will say I'm more excited about this than I am the iMac. Because I, th- I think the iMac's a good machine. But the thing that puts me off the iMac, and someone that said to me yesterday, you know, you mentioned this, you weren't happy with the, the iMac. What, what bothered you about it? The, the truth is the problem I have with it is it's not, it doesn't have a pro variant. I don't know why it doesn't, but it just doesn't. So... Yeah. You know, clearly down the line, there will be some kind of iMac Pro with an M4 Pro or an M5 Pro or something in it. I think that may come down the line. I think that will also come down the line with a bigger screen as well. You mentioned yesterday about the 24-inch screen. Yes. I think it's more likelihood of a bigger screen coming with that. But the benefit of the Mac Mini is you can bring your own screen, or in our case, no screen. Yes. You can attach any keyboard you like. You can attach any mouse you like. You can, of course, buy any of the new USB-C accessories. I was checking today on the website, and they have the extended keyboard uh, with USB-C now. They have everything, basically, with USB-C. They've secretly, I say secretly, quietly um, yes. changed everything on the website to basically have, <laughs> oh, no, so USB-C. Oh, look, there you go. Who knew? Yeah. You know, sleight of hand move, et cetera. Don't mention it. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. I, I don't know what excites me about what, well, no. Let me take that back. Of course I know why I'm excited by the Mac Mini is because it's the most affordable way in. Well, and yeah. I, I think at that price, you know, I think that's an absolute bargain, to be honest. I'm not sure about the design. I do like it. Smaller the better. It's just like I can stick a Mac Mini in my coat pocket mm. and walk around with it. If I could find a, a, a battery pack, you know, strong enough, you could. That, cause that's my new laptop. Um I do love the Mac Mini, especially for us. Let's be a little bit selfish and just talk about us for mm-hmm. a minute. And that, uh, you know, you can run it without a screen. I wonder if it's got a speaker in it. That's interesting. They usually do. They usually have a small speaker in there just for They do, but a five inch by and... five inch? Maybe yeah, it does. Maybe not. This could be just perfect. I love the form factor. I'm not entirely sure why, but um just seems great. I can see so many um you know, we're going to get so many accessories for this. Being able to get a Visa mount to stick it on the back of your monitor, for example. Exactly, yeah. Make an all-in-one. Uh, there's going to be so much weird stuff available for this. It's just cool. And just, just to sort of pick up on the design a little bit, because for those who, who wouldn't see the images of this, on the back you've got an Ethernet port uh, still. You've got your power uh, section, of course, the, the figure of eight cable that goes in there. And you've got an HDMI. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. They haven't got rid of that. But they have also got three uh, USB-C ports. Thunderbolt 4 on the M4 model, M4 Pro, you get the uh, Thunderbolt 5. On the front of the device, something you've never had before, which is two USB-Cs on the front and a headphone jack. So they've moved the headphone jack to the front. I just think that's so cool. At least I think that's what's at the front. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of, because there's no headphone jack on the back, so and they always have a headphone jack on it, so I'm guessing it's moved to do. the front. Um, yeah. 
And I think that's the case on the studio. Oh, I could be wrong. I think that's similar to what the studio design is. It almost feels like this is becoming a studio mini. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this could be the studio. I mean, they could just... The only thing that this doesn't have is, you know, the the ultra chip or the max chip that you get with the, the various mm. silicon chips that they have, you know, M3. I think the, the current Mac Studio has an M2 Max in it, or M3 Max it might be. It's it's so funny. You mentioned the the the, the you know, sort of annual, you know, unveiling and, and the way they're doing it at the minute. It seems to me like the studio is ancient right now. Uh, when yeah, I think does. back of the... It mm-hmm. seems like, oh, that's so old. But it's not. It's not actually. It's just... There's been so many releases and so many different updates and refreshes. I'm getting a little bit confused with it all. But um, yeah, the Mac Mini still has a sort of, it has a place in my heart. It was the first Mac. It was the only way I could get into the Mac ecosystem. And I did love it. You know, I did run Windows on it for a long time. But still, I thought it was a fantastic piece of kit. But that's something you can do on a Mac Mini. You can do that. You could have a, a machine which is Mac and Windows. Linux, yep. if you want that, Unix, whatever you, you know, whatever you want, you can run it on there, you know, run it in emulation and it will run well. But this is going to be interesting. I am very keen on this. I wasn't sure at first. Oh. I'd read all the different rumors and it's usual with me. One. Yeah, I, I'm just, this is typical for me. You know, this is just typical. It is, you know, I, I say to myself, I'm not going to buy one. No way. I don't need it. It's nonsense. And then I, I hear all this stuff and I'm like, <laughs> ah, no, it does sound quite nice, right? It does sound quite cool. Hang on. Did it also say this is 1.8% faster than the M1? Uh, I think it did, yes. I and, think it well, did. not percent, times. I think times, yeah. 1.8 yeah. times faster than the M1. But didn't the iMac yesterday say it was 1.7 times yes, faster? Yes, it did, yeah. Where's that 0.1 uh, times <laughs> coming from? Uh, these numbers are so arbitrary, <laughs> I don't even know what they mean. And of course, it all depends on the applications you're running as well. I mean, the thing is, I can tell, yes. I've been using an M3 MacBook Pro or M3 Pro, I should say, chip that's inside it, inside the MacBook Pro, and it is notably faster than what I've experienced before in a MacBook Pro. My last experience of a MacBook Pro was with an M1 Pro. And um, yeah, it just feels so much nicer, so much faster. Placebo. Well, also, I've been running VMware Fusion on it with Windows, and that is snappy. That is snappy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's you impressive. You were quite happy with the, your your last setup with Windows no, running in in a virtual machine on Mac. I think the M ones were probably just good enough, but I think also the, the emulation software had work to do. I think yeah. Windows had work to do. It was there was more to it than just the the Mac itself. Of course. I mean, yeah. the thing is, when you actually go back now, this is the interesting thing with it. If you go back to an M one now with the updated software that's come through, you actually don't find it as slow or as bad as you thought the experience was because the software's improved. And it kind of proves, and yeah. it, I will say, those who've bought the the original, the, the first MacBook Air that came out with M1, that's a good machine. I mean, remember that was the machine that came out. Everyone tried to break it. They yeah, tried yeah. every possible thing. I remember someone had like 100 applications on their computer. They went into the applications folder. They hit Command A to select all of the applications and then Command yeah. O to open the lot of them. And they timed it on an Intel and on the M1. And, you know, the Intel melted while the, you know, the, the, the M1 kind of just sort of, there you go. And it was fully up and running in like 10 seconds. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's no denying. Apple just absolutely crushed it when it came to their, their arm, I was going to say ARM chip, but that's Apple Silicon chip. And it, it's, it's so funny because, you know, all the excitement we had about the Snapdragon Elites, you know, the, the ARM silicon that was meant to be revolution uh, revolutionizing Windows in mm. the same way. And it just didn't. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because th- they kind of alluded to this or made mention of the PC AI chips um, in the presentation uh, that they, they put out on YouTube. Let, let's play a clip of this. It talks about the M4 Pro chip, how it works. And they make reference to, let's just say, a comparison between, between the two. I wonder... I wonder what Apple will think of their chips compared to Microsoft's. (laughs) Introducing M4 Pro. M4 Pro takes the advanced technologies debuted in M4 and scales them up to tackle even more demanding workloads. It starts with our incredible CPU performance core, which delivers lightning fast, single threaded performance. In fact, it's the world's fastest CPU core. So everyday tasks like launching apps happen instantly and complex web pages are more responsive than ever. 
M4 Pro has a new 14-core CPU complex for phenomenal multi-threaded performance. And its 20-core GPU is twice as powerful as the one in M4. M4 Pro also features a massive 75% increase in memory bandwidth over M3 Pro. Now that's twice as much bandwidth as any AI PC chip, and it's especially impactful when running AI workloads. So multi-threaded CPU performance is up to 1.9 times faster than M1 Pro, and up to 2.1 times faster than the latest AI PC chip. And GPU performance is also up to 1.9 times faster than M1 Pro, and a remarkable 2.4 times faster than the PC chip. This huge boost in performance makes building and testing apps across multiple simulators in Xcode quicker than ever. With the improved hardware accelerated ray tracing engine in the M4 family GPU, Pro 3D renderers produce stunning imagery in even less time. And games like Control, with its ray traced effects, look way more compelling. Finally, the Neural Engine is over three times faster than the one in M1 Pro. And when you combine that with the huge uplift in unified memory bandwidth, on-device Apple intelligence models run at blazing speed. So that's M4 Pro. With incredible CPU and GPU performance, huge increase in memory bandwidth, and a faster neural engine, it's far more powerful and capable than any AI PC chip. Now, I, I wanted to play that clip right through to that point because of that line at the end faster than any other ai pc chip out there now that may not surprise you that apple would say that of course yep. they're going to say that i mean i can also tell you for example that the iphone 17 is going to be significantly faster than the iphone 16 um you know that's just going to be you know a thing next year <laughs> believe it or not i know i may be shocking you with facts and blinding you and with the science. best iphone they've ever made and the best one they've ever made ever with the best camera <laughs> the best speakers the best everything but it does yeah. show that there's that, that there is a lot of power in here and i think that this is one thing that apple have got right uh, we can't really take this away from them that's exactly what i was about to say yeah you know what they deserve the bragging rights on this because it's not easy, this shift in architecture. Um, and they got it right. They, they just did. And the Qualcomm Snapdragon Elite, you know, we were promised so much with it and we all got so excited and then performance just wasn't there. Emulation wasn't there. Now, you could argue that Apple have got it because they've got total control mm. of the entire stack. They've got the software, they've got the hardware, you know, it all works together, whereas, you know, Microsoft taking care of emulation and then you've got another company doing the hardware, you've got that disconnect there. And maybe that's the, the secret sauce is, is having total control. But you know what? Let them say that because they are right. They've they absolutely nailed it in the case of the Apple Silicon. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately accessible uh, in every way because, of course, you know, the design, the fact that you don't need a monitor, all that stuff. Um, which, of course, has a huge impact on price. Now, you said yesterday, you know, you're paying for the screen. And, yeah, there's no doubt you're paying for that huge, beautiful screen that's inside that iMac. But with the Mac Mini, you don't need to bother with that. You don't need to uh, worry about the screen. So the price, uh, starting at 799 Canadian, that's 599 US and similar in the UK, uh, that is an incredible price point for 16 gig of memory. The only downside is... The hard drive. That's the same problem we talked about yesterday with the iMac. The the base level now seems to be two five six. I've got to say that's a little bit cheeky of Apple to do that. I think so. I think the I mean, base uh, should be five twelve. Yeah, said this I, yesterday, I, I, but I, I stand by it because I think that's a little bit cheeky because the you know nobody seriously is going to buy that model unless you're just going to be using it for browsing the web. You know, that's all you're doing with it. Fine, but you know, anyone who wants to do anything on that mm. machine needs a five twelve or beyond. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, even 512. I mean, terabyte is becoming standard now. The prices have dropped right down on terabytes. With that being said, I mean, the, apparently the, the hard drives that they use are very, you know, speedy. Mm. So, I mean, I don't. yeah, it just isn't enough. There's no getting away from it. I mean, unless you're using external hard disks all the way through, yeah, you need more than that. So you will need to update, I suppose, or upgrade and pay the extra. But then I think about it from, so, I mean, from my point of view, I think, well, I couldn't manage with that. I mean, I manage with a 512 gig and, and I'm doing video editing and audio editing and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. And 
I am managing with 512, but then that is me being very, very cautious every week. I'm spending a Friday afternoon, you know, deleting yeah. my downloads folder, you know, everything in there, making sure that all my files are, are on I'm on top of my file Doing management. Housekeeping. Yeah, yeah, I've got to do it every single week because if I don't, that drive will run out in no time at all. And of course, you know, we, we record our shows, right? So we record the show. I can't have a hard drive just stop and say, that's it, out of space. <laughs> You know, I've got to be on top of that stuff. But but that's Don't not what most it. people are doing, right? Most people are browsing the web. They're using iCloud. Now, iCloud is brilliant because it, of course, will manage your files for you. So a lot of the files on there will, you know, disappear off to the cloud. It will manage its storage for you. In fact, even in, I, I, I mean, I was going to say iPhotos, it's not called that anymore, it's called Photos. But in the Photos app, you know, you can optimize the media for local storage or for cloud storage, and it will just yeah. bring down almost like a, a you know a, a kind of low quality image for you and a thumbnail, and then it's when you open the image that's when it'll go off and fetch the larger file if you want it to, and then once you close that file, it'll upload it back to the cloud. So file management is very good in iCloud. I don't I use iCloud a lot for my personal stuff. That's what I tend to use it for. I just have it for my personal stuff, mm. and then I use Dropbox for everything else for all the work stuff. And, yeah. you know, that's on a separate drive because of the amount of data that's flying around. It just would yeah, it would fill huge. up that drive. So you've just argued against yourself now. So 256 is fine. Well, I, I don't know if 256 is enough. It's a bit like the 64 gig iPad mini when it was out. I remember constantly running out of space on that. And whenever mm -hmm. I try and do yeah. anything with it, it would say, oh, you've run out of space. So, no, I think I think a, a 512 is a minimum. If, you, if I was recommending a, a computer, I'd say go for the 512. So pay a little bit more now. You can, of course, buy an external hard drive. Most people will do that. They'll buy an external drive to put maybe music or data or whatever you know you've got. You might want to keep that in an external drive anyway. Some people yeah. might hook up a, a second drive so they can have a time machine backup. You know, which is the the built-in backup software of a Mac, um, which is very good by the way. Which is brilliant. Machine, yeah, if that's still still running. I haven't used it in a long. No, it still time. goes. Yeah, it still works. I'm wondering if you can still uh, replace or add. Another hard drive. Remember, you could do that in the Mac Mini. Now, it was mm. a case of the, the, the most complicated game of operation you've ever had in your life. I wouldn't do it, no. <laughs> antennas about. No, but I mean, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could take it to a, a third-party repair shop and get them to replace or add a second SSD in there. There is a I'm push for that. There is a push for more of that because this whole right to repair yeah, movement has been to, you know, not just, not so much change components, although that is part of it. But it's also about being able to repair. But I suppose in order to repair it, you have to get to it, right? So, mm. you know, I suppose that would be something that would be useful. But I, I guess that, that Apple would probably say that most of these companies do nowadays. If you open it, you know, it's on you. You know, you've broken your yeah, warranty. That, that's that's grey when it comes to the legalities of it. You can't open your own hardware that you own, but we won't get into that now. Right to repair all the way. But um, I, I'm just wondering with this new design, this smaller design, you know, because the Mac Mini had that, you know, you used to be able to unscrew the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. That's to replace, right. uh, uh, you know, or add more memory or replace the memory and eventually get to the hard disk. I'm just wondering if it's the same. I, I, I suspect not. I suspect it's already sealed in. But still, yeah, like, like, like moving away from it, I think it's just a, a great, great computer, a great price. Which, how often do we get to say that about Apple? Well, absolutely. I mean, that sort of price is a budget, you know, desktop PC. I wouldn't expect much from a desktop Windows PC for that. But in this case, you're getting a lot of performance there for your money. I think if you could get around the hard drive issues and you could, you know, get away with it, the 799 starting price, it, you're going to get a good machine. And that's 799 Canadian, of course, 599 US. If you are paying that base price, you're going to get a good machine. You, you may have to do some cartwheels with your hard drives, but, you know, again, that's fixable. And it's a lot cheaper to buy an external hard drive and plug that in versus, you know, getting yeah, Apple, because yeah, yeah. the prices just fly up. I will say, though, this is interesting because it's the first time I've seen, the last Mac Mini I remember would go up to, I think it went up to like 32, or maybe it was 24 t uh, gigabytes of RAM in the configurator. Mm. Um you can actually go further than that. You can go from you can go up to uh, sixty four gig, and your hard drive uh, can be increased up to eight terabytes, which I've never seen before on the. Wow, Mac. how much is that? I haven't priced <laughs> it out. I haven't priced. I will be pricing it out. So I'll let you know. But I'm, I'm intrigued. Just to, I'm, I wouldn't spend that money on it. But I would. Just, I would just buy an eight terabyte hard drive to be perfectly honest and plug it in. 
And if you can get Thunderbolt 5 drives down the line, I mean, of course, those are costly as well, but, yeah. you know, even Thunderbolt 4 drives um, or, or solid state drives. You got a two terabyte solid state drive. You can probably pick that up now for what, $100, $200? Do you think? I don't know. I haven't really They're seen the bad. external solid SSDs at the minute. Uh, um, yeah. I, I, I'm, the other thing, of course, no USB A. No, it's dead. That's it. It's, it's gone. It's dead. It yeah. is. It is starting to look that way. They are, you are seeing less and less USB A's. Kind of sad, but uh, USB C is the way to go. Well, it's good because I've only got USB C to USB C cables in this house, so I can't. You know, no. <laughs> which, which seems to be a perfect reason to buy a Mac Mini. There you go. Can I just I've say, sold it to myself? Just to, uh, as a reminder, you've got a bag of cables in your attic. Don't know what okay, you're talking about. Just, just letting you know. So, if you want to get in touch with the show, here's how. <laughs> Get in touch with Double Tap. Email feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. And now you can send an audio or video message to us on WhatsApp. That number is 1-613-481-0144. Okay, let us uh, dive into the inbox, shall we? Because uh, we got a lot of emails and uh, voicemails and WhatsApp messages and all of that. I know you've been keeping an eye on WhatsApp. Uh, that machine is uh, that is burning up, isn't it? It is, yes. And I'm actually trying to respond to some of those WhatsApp as well. So if you are sending in a message, I will get back to you at some point. Uh, thank you very much. I'm getting used to this WhatsApp. It's very good, you know. Uh, who knew? <laughs> who knew? And a lot of people are loving it because I find a lot of new names on there. A lot of people who've never contacted us an audio before. Uh, because, you know, the whole process of putting an, an audio file onto an email, for, you know, some people can be pretty challenging. I get it. Uh, and it's a lot of hassle to go through. Whereas with WhatsApp, you can just send uh, an actual message or a video message. You can do that as well. You should try that and let us know how you get on. Um, doesn't matter if you send it in portrait or landscape. doesn't matter. Just just record a video. We don't care. Yeah, it's we fine. don't care. Um, listen, let's go to a couple of emails though, to kick off with. Laura, of course, reading our emails as always. I'm a huge fan of your podcast and have been following your extremely helpful content regarding the exciting developments in the wearable space. Question. Wouldn't the best outcome for us be a pair of generic smart glasses with camera, microphone and speakers included that could be accessed via Bluetooth and therefore usable by any smartphone app? Then be my eyes, OCO, Envision and countless other accessibility apps could use the camera, mic and speakers on board the glasses. Basically, it would be like external devices that desktop and laptop apps can access today. That seems like the holy grail for us, and from a hardware perspective, shouldn't be that hard. Basically, just Bose frames with a camera. Curious what you think. Thanks again for all that you do. Uh, thank you for that. I know you wanted to keep your, your name out of that email, but uh, well, th first off, thank you for sending it. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a great question, but I think ultimately we have to understand what's going on here. It's, it's not that the glasses themselves aren't capable of doing all this. Like, for example, the, the Meta Ray-Bans could potentially, you know, provide the camera feed to apps on the device. It's the device itself that's the problem. Uh, it, it's interesting because I hear from certain corners of, of the Android world that there are phones that will pass through the camera, you know, you know essentially to the app so that you could choose that as that camera. Like you could choose a webcam on a, a, a computer. Yeah. But that's not possible with Apple. It's just not possible. They won't They won't let that happen uh, unless, I don't know, unless it's the app itself, you know, Meta in, in their case, you know, essentially control that route. Um, but it, it, the opening that up to third parties on, you know, it, it's, it's an Apple restriction, isn't it? It is, yeah. You're absolutely right in saying that that, that is what we want. And you, you, yes, of course we do. Yeah, we just need a, a, a external camera we can wear on our face. But the fact of the matter is, it's the software lockout on this. This is a design decision that, that Apple are making, and Google to some degree as well. This is um, look. There may be very good reason for it. I don't want to say it, it, it. You know, this is a terrible, terrible decision. There may be security reasons behind it, privacy reasons that I don't know. That, you know, they're trying to keep us safe from uh, malicious use of a camera that we may not know about. But the fact of the matter is, until Apple or whoever else opens up the operating system to allow us to choose. Okay, what camera do you want to use? Do you want to use the built-in one or the external one you have connected via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? or whatever it may be. They need to open up the OS to do that. 
And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Well, sadly. see, this is the weird thing, right? Because when you think about the iPad, it does have that capability now. You can use an external camera as a webcam. You can. With an iPad. Because of the USB-C, they opened it up. Yeah. So it's possible. So why is it possible on one device and not the other? I, I, I don't understand what's going on here. Is it because Apple are building their own version of something and they don't really want to open it up? Um, well, actually, no, that's know. an excellent point. Yeah, because you're absolutely right. Because of the USB and, and the way they opened it up, you could add in so many different things, right? You can add in an internet connection, USB, yeah, Ethernet yeah. to USB. You can keyboards and, you know, we use it for microphones all the time. But you're absolutely right. You can add a webcam to that as well. So maybe that's a good sign. Maybe that may happen in the future. The, the, maybe it's the, the, the wire... The wireless design they're more worried about for security. I, I don't honestly don't know what the reasoning is behind it. I want to put a challenge out to our audience here. Yes. Anyone with a 16 Pro, go get an adapter and plug a webcam into it. Let's see what happens. I'm intrigued. Where would you look to see that selection? Would you then open up the camera app and see? which camera it's using? Well, that's Do the thing. It could, be, it could be the app itself that gives you the choice. Now, what was the app? Someone told me about an app recently. I think it was Blackmagic. I think is the... Is the so Blackmagic is uh, the well-known in the broadcast industry for their, their tools they use. Um, and they have fantastic cameras and broadcast systems and all that. They'd recently brought out an app, which was basically bringing all of the functionality of their Blackmagic cameras into the iPhone experience. Not the most ex accessible, I'll be honest. But here's, here's the thing. In that app, you can choose the camera. So the apps allow it. And this is my point. Like Meta can say, yes, that's the camera. Blackmagic can say, yes, that's the camera. The problem is then opening that up, that device up to other applications. You can't seem to cross the streams. That's the issue at the minute. Mm. So I don't know what the solution there is. And that's perhaps because it's not an Apple certified product. Remember they used to make webcams? They had the EyeSight cameras, if you remember back in the day. Um, if they brought those back, maybe those could work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no idea. No it's idea, interesting but, though. It's interesting. But yeah. I, I get your point because the, the point that's being made in this email is there's all these glasses, but they all have their own costs, their own, you know, their own subscription models, their, their own, own whatever. ways of doing things. Yeah, And, and yeah. that's, you know, we can't walk around with 50 pairs of glasses around us, you know. I mean, no. a blind guy with about 50 pairs of glasses on him is is ridiculous. One pair of glasses, I get looked at, you know. So, <laughs> so it's like, why am, I, why am I walking around? Hang on, I need my Envision glasses. No, I need my Oco glasses. No, I need my Celeste glasses. No, I need my uh, Echo Vision yeah. glasses, whatever the latest yeah. thing is. Uh, it all sounds great, but you ideally just want one pair. And I think that's what people are seeing. We are certainly seeing it with the Meta Ray-Bans. That could be the answer for us. Multiple apps like Be My Eyes, Ira, getting access to the tools, Envision as well, getting access to those glasses, meaning one pair of glasses, many apps. That's the golden ticket as far as I'm concerned. But uh, we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there, but we are no, moving not, in the right direction. We're we're still having to go through a third-party developer to get access to their device. That's it right. should be their device connects to the operating system and everything else just runs off that. And we're not there yet, but yeah. Great email. Uh, let's move on to Ian. Hello, Stephen and Sean. A quid pro quo, if you can. Oh. A few podcasts ago, you complained about your hot water dispenser not stopping automatically. Oh, yeah. I had this problem until I found the Breville Hot Cup hot water dispenser. This one does stop after pouring out a decent mug-sized mount and holds about five cups worth in its tank, currently on sale on Amazon for 40 quid. In return, can you help me with two things? Okay. One, I've just bought the Ray-Bans, 26th of September, and cannot get the AI to work, although everything else is great. I then read conflicting reports and fixes on the web for getting them to work in the UK. Apparently, we are now banned again from Meta AI. Can you tell me whether there is a current ban or do I have to try some fix or other? Two, I've written to you several times since discovering your show, as it is very thought-provoking. I've yet to hear any of my emails read out on the podcast. <laughs> is this because you read out more on your YouTube or you have a long backlog or my emails are rubbish? Laughing face. <laughs> anyway, keep up the great content. So excited about the Ray-Ban, say it quietly, potential. Ian from Hull. 
<laughs> Thank you, Ian. I think we did read one of your emails out at some point during the course, but I, I honestly cannot remember. I know I have certainly read them uh, as they've been coming in, and I know that Laura has been reading them. So uh, you yeah. hopefully will have heard your email. But yeah, it's all a bit mixed up at the minute. We 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 just we literally swim through the email inbox every day. And, yeah, and we, we thank should. you for that. But it's, it's, it's hard for us to keep track all the time of what, what's been aired and when. We are trying to work through the... Uh, there is a bit of a bat, backlog with the feedback. But, um, Based on the date yes. of that one, yeah. We, yeah, we, we do apologise. <laughs> so the ever ongoing meta AI in the UK uh, debate... Well, remember um, that was September. So 26th of September when you got mm-hmm. the glasses. So, you know, we've had a, a bit of time since then. Um, I'm, I mean, I've got I, it. I, I'm... I'm running it and it's it's not i'm running disappeared it as well for me at all um, but i'm still hearing reports from people saying no nope, doesn't work for me uh, mm. the, the look and describe uh, the latest update i got says that you know don't don't have to say look anymore just say describe what's in front of me and i do and it works i tried it out this morning also read aloud what's in front of me as well i haven't tried that out yet okay um but anyway um yes from i've actually reached out to meta to see if i can get a, a, an official response i can um but uh, it seems to be, the consensus seems to be it's a phased rollout here in the UK. Mm. So some people are getting it and some people aren't. But um, I'm pretty confident that most people will be getting it, if not by now, then pretty soon. Do you want to quickly mention the VPN process there for Ian if, if he needs it? Yeah, okay. So the way to enable it, if, if you can't get Meta AI at the moment, is basically you need to tell it that, hey, I'm not in the UK, I'm in Canada at the moment, or the US, or somewhere where Meta AI is absolutely available. And in order to do that, you use a VPN program. So go to the App Store and search for a VPN. Now, there is a free one, I believe it's called Windscreen or something like that. I will double check and put it in the show notes. Um, But there is a free one. And basically, get whatever you want, Nord, PIA, Tunnel Bear, there's so many out there. Um, But don't pay for a yearly subscription because all you need to do is install the VPN, tell it you're in Canada, for example, and then open the MetaView app and it will see that and it will eventually, it may take a couple of attempts, you know, to open it up. Um, It will say, Meta AI, would you like to enable it? Once it says that and you set it up, you can turn off your VPN and if you want, you can take the program off of your phone. Uh, because you don't need it constantly running. It's just in that initial setup, you need a VPN to be running. So yeah, don't pay for 12 months because the chances are you just need it the once. And if you can get a free VPN, then that's the way to go. There is one out there and I will double check and I'll put it in the show notes for you. Yeah, that's good. Um, I, I know mine is okay. I, I know I'm getting Meta AI properly because I went into my Nord VPN app yesterday and it was on, it was connected. I thought, oh, hang on. Perhaps I'm oh. yeah, connected to my VPN. Don't confuse things now, Stephen. <laughs> but it was set to UK. Oh. So okay. yeah, it's it's clearly here because, you know, I'm I'm in a VPN in my own country. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've, so I've actually working. removed my I haven't put it on since uh, I've gone back to another phone. I haven't put the VPN on. So and I set up the metas again and yeah, I was offered meta AI straight away. Well, it feels at the minute like everyone's talking about Glide or they're talking about Meta Ray-Bans and Scott certainly wants to pick up on the Meta Ray-Bans. G'day, Double Tappers. Scott from Sydney, Australia here. Hey, Scott. I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your piece, Sean, on the Meta Ray-Ban glasses. I am really considering buying a pair myself And I'm wondering, since you have done the unboxing a few weeks ago, have you found more uses for these glasses and have you run into any other issues with the glasses? The main reasons why I would want them is to use with Ira. And also, I like the idea of asking Meta, what can you see? And having heard some of the comments from your listeners that the glasses do give out incorrect info at times, such as street signs, etc., do you think this will improve over time with software updates or do we need to wait for a new model with better cameras, etc.? I'm actually going down to the store to take a look at these tomorrow or so. 
But the other question I have is, I know when you look in the app, it tells you the charge level of the glasses, and this is pretty cool. Approximately, how much battery life do you get out of these glasses? Is it about four hours or thereabouts? And what is the charging time for the glasses once you put them back in the case? Thanks very much, and keep up the awesome work with the podcast. Thanks, Scott. Sean, take it away. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, it's difficult. Uh, I will say yes. They they are improving all the time, and when it comes down to things like image description from AI, and as other people have said, and as you mentioned there, it does get a lot of things wrong, as AI tends to. Um, but that will improve. I don't think that has to do with the cameras. I think that is purely down to the power of the Llama AI model. And as we saw recently in the Meta event, the Llama 3.2 model is looking incredibly impressive. So that's, you know, there's there's just going to be an update and that will come along to the Meta glasses at some point. So we're going to see a huge improvement there, hopefully. I don't think the camera is going to improve. The way that the Meta camera is is that it's it's for the the field of view it's for photography it's for streaming it's not actually great for text for small text and um people have said you know it's blurry if you try and read text it does okay with it it will read text but i don't think that's going to improve anytime soon these aren't really for ocr um but aside from that for me the meta glasses th- th- look with the announcement from be my eyes they're coming on there that's going to be huge. And for me, it's getting that assistance through the glasses, which really make these worthwhile for me. Making those WhatsApp video calls to someone, being able to get guided into the entrance in, in a building. Uh, it's just, it's so, so useful. Um, so f- I still think that the Metas at the moment are the best choice out there for us and they will get better. Yeah, and you've got Ira on there as well. And the waitlist has opened up even more. So more people yeah, can, can use that. Yeah, it's public now, so you can get in and use it. And that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's a, one of those things, these don't, I mean, I was expecting a new pair of Meta Ray-Bans this year when the Meta Connect event happened in September. I was kind of expecting something new to come along and all they did was come up with a new design, but the hardware in there was not changed. That might come next year. Definitely they're on a path of, of upgrading these now, I'd imagine. Maybe not as regular as every year. Think? Yeah, I don't think they'll do it every year, but I think maybe every couple of years they'll do it. Because I, I don't think people would buy sunglasses, new sunglasses every year. I don't think that would be the no, case. Unless they uh, come up with some good trade-in program or something, I don't think they would do that. When we're talking mainstream, what are people going to upgrade for? You know, it's, exactly. it's all about the design when it comes to, that's the main thing, how they look for most people. Um, for a newer camera, higher resolution, most people don't really care, I don't think. And as I said, I think the camera is actually, the, the video quality is really good. But for OCR and reading text, it's, it's, it's not really designed for that. That's the only thing. That's the only limitation I see at the minute. Oh, battery life. I've got to say, I'm really impressed. I, w- I was coming when I got these with the expectation that battery life was going to be absolutely terrible. I actually think it's really good. I haven't run out ever on these. I've charged the case only three times, twice since I've bought them. It always seems to be charged and the charging time in the case to 100%, let's say from 50% to 100%, seems like no time at all. I can't give you like two hours or an hour, but it seems really quick. I've never had any problems with the battery life. No, me neither. And when I was on holiday, I was taking loads of videos. I was using all the time for videos and I was expecting that to just kill it flat very quickly yes. um and you know i was able to go a couple of hours um you know i think at one point in, in one day i was taking like 40 videos of about a minute two minutes each i think they were at yeah. the time and um that was with me taking the glasses off i mean it, it tells you it's audibly telling you all the time what the you know when, when the battery starts to get low so you know right okay i'll take the glasses off now i'd put them in there for maybe 20 minutes I wasn't really timing it, but say 20 minutes on the coach between one stop and the next. And then, you know, take the glasses, put them back on again. And there you go. I was I was fully charged and ready to go, or at least 100%. charged enough. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very impressive. And that, that as you say, that glasses case just charges. It never seems to lose charge. It's absolutely amazing. I, I, I almost use them like um, a pair of 
headphones, you know, like mm-hmm. the AirPods or whatever wireless earbuds you've got with a charging case. You put them in there for a little bit, you pull them out, and they do just always seem to be at 100%. So, yeah, yeah I'm really impressed. I want to mention, uh, thank you for that, Scott. I appreciate that. And thank you for your comments about the show as well. We really appreciate those. Greg has been in touch from Pennsylvania. Hi, guys. Just writing to share a surprising Be My AI experience. A friend left me a handwritten list, which I asked my wife to read, but she really struggled with the handwriting and could only make out an odd word here and there. Not expecting much success, I took a picture with Be My AI and it read the whole list flawlessly with the exception of one letter on one name that was easy to correct. Absolutely amazing. Assistive technology outperforming a sighted educated human. I've used Be My AI on old technical drawings of NASA satellite components. Utterly amazing what it's capable of. Regards, Greg in Pennsylvania. Yeah, but that again comes down to the camera in the device as well, doesn't it? That that matters uh, to be able to get that, you know, that pixel accuracy, to be able to detect that and be able to read it. But the AI, of course, doing the rest of the work in the background is amazing. It, it is amazing. And it's also baffling to me at the same time. I mean, you know, we see AI do amazing things like that. And that's what always impresses me about AI is how it surprises me. Mm. You know, well, I didn't think it would be able to do that. And I get that response all the time. But at, <laughs> at the same time, it's always, hang on, how did it get that so wrong? Um, so, yeah. yeah, there's no denying. Look, it's, it's those sort of um, demonstrations that really, again, we'll use the word, why not? It's the potential of it. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. That's a, that's a cool little story. That's it for today. Thank you so much for uh, your emails. Keep them coming. We will, of course, be uh, getting to more of those uh, tomorrow. We'll, of course, be picking up on the next announcement, which I'm going to predict is MacBook Pro. It's going to be MacBook Pro next time. Um, or really? something say, totally different. Yeah, I'm a new airport. Um, a, a new uh, airport? But, but air, planes air, and, and gates and, no, and no, restaurants? No, the airport router. Or your Wi-Fi. It's coming back. I can oh, the feel ta- it. The time, I'd love the time capsule to come back. The Does airport time gone? capsule. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, all. Did, Remember course. that? That was, oh, that was good. Yeah, anyway, we're printer. out of time. Sorry. We Carry must on. go. Uh, yeah, the laser writer's <laughs> coming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll be a big hit. Uh, okay, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>